This is my new book. This is the follow-up and in some ways I think the companion to the Flavor Thesaurus, where the Flavor Thesaurus was about flavors and flavor combinations. This is about the form, this is about the methods. So uh, when I was writing the Flavor Thesaurus, I wished that I had a book that was um, lots of different kind of basic ideas in which I could impose flavors on. So uh, how to make a cake in loads and loads of different flavors or a bread or a custard. Uh, and this book grew out of that need, really. I started to keep lots of notes when I was writing the Flavor Thesaurus of how you might go about all those different flavor operations. I was halfway through writing the book when I started to think about how I was going to organize it, and uh, I had divided the starting point recipes into subject matters, and then it became clear to me that it would be quite interesting if I could plot the starting points on a continuum in each chapter. So taking one recipe and then if you made a few tweaks to it, how you'd make something else and then a few more tweaks. So everything lies on this kind of continuum. And the benefit of that is if you learn to cook one thing or you know already how to make one thing, you can see how it relates to something else and then feel much more confident about you know, having a go at making a panettone if you know how to make a bread roll, for example, they're, you know, there's, they are related. You're not having to learn everything from point one. You just realize that you know quite a lot of stuff already. So it's all really about building your confidence, building your repertoire, and also by understanding how recipes relate to each other. Here's an example. Here's the uh, broth, soup, and stew chapter. And we have a little pictorial um, chapter opener to show you where we're going. So we start with making uh, stock, and then we go on to making broths, and I talk about what the difference of that is, onto soups, and then chowder, and then a stew, and then a bean stew, and then a dal, and then rice dishes like kedgeri, and then I finish on risotto. And so that's there's a chain of connections all the way along. So you start realizing that you can do this without referring to any recipe at all, because you're just, you've become familiar very quickly with all the different basic ideas. You have some roots, and then from the roots the branches go, and the branches blossom, and you just you, you start with a few ideas, and suddenly you can make hundreds and hundreds of things and become the kind of cook that I've always wanted to be, or, you know, somebody who cooks by instinct and intuition. Um, I, I never thought I would be able to cook like that, but it turns out that it's never too late to learn to cook like that. Ik dacht dus eigenlijk dat de smaakbijbel al onovertroffen was. Maar nu komt Nicky met de kookbijbel en ja, dat is zo mogelijk nog fenomenaler dan haar eerste boek. Uh, het is een boek waar je volgens mij de rest van je leven uit kunt koken. Heb je trek in nog meer smakelijke video's? Abonneer je dan op ons YouTube kanaal of schrijf je in voor onze nieuwsbrief.